Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on synaptic mechanisms. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss uh, the endoplasmic reticulum activated destruction pathway. So we're going to discuss how um, the ER can destroy proteins, it can target proteins uh, for degradation. So ER activated degradation which is often abbreviated to the ERAD pathway. Um, degradation. Okay, so this is, in short, the ERAD pathway. Right. So, uh, we're going to start with how the endoplasmic reticulum removes uh, the protein uh, from its lumen, and then we're going to see how uh, the protein is ubiquitinated by uh, several enzymes, and then what we're going to see is how uh, being ubiquitinated leads to your destruction or your degradation back into amino acids. Okay, so um, this basically is a pathway for getting rid of proteins that are no good, that have misfolded within the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, whoops, whoopsie, whoopsie. Uh, let's say this is the endoplasmic reticulum here, so this is the ER. And let's say we have some protein. This pen isn't doing very well. Um, and let's say we have some misfolded protein here in our endoplasmic reticulum lumen. Then what's going to happen is that protein is going to be transported back out of uh, the ER by translocons in the ER membrane. So this protein here is known as a translocon. And it's in the membrane of the ER. Okay, so let's colour it in, let's give it a certain colour, let's colour it in turquoise here. Okay, so in turquoise we have uh, the translocon which sits in the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. So I've just, done, um, just um, to make this transparent, I will uh, just, this once, uh, write out the full name for the endoplasmic reticulum, which for um, practical, practical purposes we will denote ER endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so this is the endoplasmic reticulum here within our cell. Now, this protein that has been misfolded, basically, is going to be transported back out of the ER uh, through this translocon. So what's going to happen is you're going to unfold it, and it's going to be gradually fed back through this translocon. So let me show this happening. So what you're going to do is take this end, and you're going to feed it back through this translocon. So it's going to go through and let's say this is the rest of the protein sitting in here. So it's gradually, as it's being fed through this translocon, it's going to be unfolded. Right. Now, in the, me in the cytoplasm, when it arrives back in the cytoplasm, what is going to happen is that it's going to be ubiquitinated, which is the process by which ubiquitin groups are added on to a protein. So we're going to look at now the process of ubiquitination. Okay, so ubiquitin is a protein. It's not a particularly long protein. I think it's only around 70 amino acids in length. Uh, but it is a protein, and it's something that we can add on to generally lysine amino acids of uh, polypeptides. And it's something, it's a molecular marker uh, within a cell it, for that protein to be destroyed. So you tag a protein with ubiquitin if you want it to be destroyed, basically. It's like a marker saying, destroy me, destroy me, basically. Okay, so we're now going to study the process by which you add ubiquitin onto lysine amino acids in this polypeptide. So let's say we have our polypeptide coming out of the translocon. And by the way, this ubiquitination process will occur as the polypeptide comes out of the um, endoplasmic reticulum through the translocon. So here is our polypeptide coming out through this translocon. So let me just colour this back in to show you what you're looking at. So this is a translocon here in turquoise, which is feeding our polypeptide that has failed to fold in the correct way back out. Now, uh, this polypeptide is going to have ubiquitin groups added on to its lysine groups, which we can denote as K. K is the single um, single letter code for the amino acid lysine. So when you see people referring to K, that just means lysine. Okay, now the structure of lysine, let me show you the structure of the amino acid lysine. So we'll start off with the basic amino acid structure. So here's the amino group, here's the alpha carbon, 
here's the carboxylic acid group over here okay and then off the alpha carbon you also have a hydrogen and then the R group of lysine is that you have these four methylene groups like so so here are these four methylene groups okay and then on the end of this um, four carbon R group you then have an amino group Okay, so here is the amino group right on the end. And that now is the structure of lysine. The amino acid lysine is here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add the ubiquitin group onto this amino group right at the terminus here. So, let me now discuss the structure of ubiquitin. Well, we're not going to discuss it in too much detail, but basically ubiquitin is a polypeptide. So we'll denote it as box, basically. And a shorthand for ubiquitin is just to put ob. So ub means ubiquitin. So this is ubiquitin. Okay. And ubiquitin is a polypeptide. So it's a string of amino acids joined together. So it has a terminal amino acid. And that terminal amino acid is going to have a free carboxylic acid group. So this basically, what I'm putting here, is the carboxylic acid of the last amino acid in the polypeptide chain. So basically, if I draw the polypeptide out linearly, you'll have amino acids starting over here, and here will be this unbound uh, amine group right at this end. And then right at the other end, you'll then have a free carboxylic acid group on the terminal amino acid, and this is the carboxyl terminal. So this carboxylic acid group I put here is the carboxyl terminal of ubiquitin. And just for added interest, the final amino acid in ubiquitin is, incidentally, glycine. Okay, and what we're going to do is link this carboxylic acid group to this amine group in an amide bond. But we don't do it directly. You don't just get an enzyme in, link that onto there. Instead, there's a whole bunch of steps that I'm going to bore you with. Okay, so... Let's begin. So there are three enzymes, three classes of enzymes, which are involved in the ubiquitination process. So the first enzyme that's going to start the whole process off is known as a ubiquitin activating enzyme. And I want to stress that there is not just one form of this enzyme, there are loads of ubiquitin activating enzymes. So the first enzyme that's going to start this whole process off is a type of enzyme known as a ubiquitin activating enzyme. And because that's a bit of a mouthful, someone has decided that ubiquitin activating enzymes should be um, denoted E1 enzymes. Okay, so here is our E1 enzyme here. Okay, so we'll have our E1 enzyme here. And basically the E1 enzyme has an available thiol group. It has a sulfur with a hydrogen off it here. So in this structure of this protein, of this E1 enzyme, there is some side group that has a thiol in it, usually cysteine. Okay, and this thiol is going to be extremely important. So what's going to happen is this ubiquitin activating enzyme, and we should give it a colour because it's a very important enzyme, so we'll colour it in purple here. This E1 enzyme, it's going to react with the ubiquitin first. So, we're going to bring in our ubiquitin, and I'm going to flip it round so the carboxylic acid group faces this, um, this thiol group. So this is ubiquitin, and here's its carboxylic acid group here. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to perform a condensation reaction between this uh, carboxylic acid group of ubiquitin and the thiol group of the E1, or the ubiquitin activating enzyme. Okay, and what this is going to result in is it's going to result in the E1 enzyme here, okay, being linked to the ubiquitin group. So here's the S, and now it's going to be linked to the carbon there with this oxygen going off up here, and here's the ubiquitin here. Well, the rest of the ubiquitin protein, which we're just showing as a box, as this blue box. Okay, so we've performed a condensation reaction where we have removed this hydroxyl group here from that carboxylic acid group of ubiquitin, and we've removed the hydrogen from the thiol group of the E1 enzyme, shown here in pink. Okay. Right. And I think we will cut this video here, 
and we'll continue our discussion in the next video. So E1 has so far bound to the ubiquitin and it's activated it basically.